Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we explored all the different options available in the Dynatrace user interface. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. In this video, we will deep dive at some of the important features commonly used by performance testing teams. So without any further delay, let's get started. As you know, Dynatrace offers so many options to monitor applications and infrastructure. Depending on the needs, performance testers will focus on specific features or options. Mastering every option will undoubtedly give you great command of the tool. However, is it really necessary for a performance tester to learn all these concepts? So performance testers might be thinking which features are truly important for them to focus on their performance testing activities. Let's find out. But before we proceed, a small disclaimer. I have compiled this list based on the common activities that performance testers typically engage in during their projects. There may be exceptional cases where additional activities are required. In such situations, performance testers may use other options as needed. Okay. In the observe and explore section, performance testers typically use dashboards to create custom dashboards and the data explorer to visualize data as needed. Depending on the situation, they may also visit the metrics page to check if the required metric is available in the Dynatrace. During load tests, if Dynatrace detects any problem, performance testers investigate the root cause on the problems page. Among these options, the most frequently used one is dashboards. Under infrastructure observability, the most commonly used option is hosts. On this page, performance testers validate all the servers in the performance testing environment are being monitored. If any servers are missing, they contact the Dynatrace administration team for support. If there are any issues with a specific host, they will drill down to understand its health and other metrics. Okay. Next application observability. This is the section performance testers most commonly use. During performance tests, if there is an SRA deviation for a transaction, they will use the services section to drill down and identify the problematic component. Depending on the need, they will also create multi-dimensional analysis for further investigation. Final one, digital experience. If performance tester need to gather client-side performance data, they go to web. They analyze the user actions and the performance of those actions. If necessary, they will also track individual user sessions to pinpoint the problematic areas. Okay. Next, we will open the Dynat resource environment and deep dive the most commonly used options. First, let's try to log into Dynat resource environment. So launch the Dynat resource environment URL in the browser and then it will ask you to enter the registered email address. So type the registered email, click next, and then enter the password. Once you enter the right credentials, then it will validate the credentials and then allow you to log into Dynatrace console. Okay. Since in our last video, we have used the classic interface. That is why it is directly taking me to classic interface. If you use the latest interface, it might log in you to the latest interface. So don't get confused by seeing the different interfaces. In this deep dive session as well, we will try to use the classic interface. The reason because even if you open any feature in the latest interface, the screens look pretty similar as classic. For example, in this demo, we will be looking at the host from the infrastructure observability section. So if we click the host classic, so the screen that you are seeing is very similar when we go back to the classic interface and then the host screen. So that is the reason I have decided to continue the deep dive sessions in the classic interface. Okay. In today's video, we will deep dive the commonly used scenarios from infrastructure observability section and then the application observability. And in the upcoming section, we will discuss the other remaining features. Okay. From the infrastructure observability, the commonly used feature is host. When we click the host, it will display this information. Since we have only one machine running with one agent, that is why it is only showing one host. But in real time, we may be seeing multiple hosts here because in real time, we will be monitoring our performance testing environment, right? Where there are multiple servers and one agent will be installed on all those servers. So you will be seeing all that information here. But for this demo purpose, since we have installed the agent in our laptop, so that is why we are only seeing one server. The main purpose of this host screen is to quickly understand what are all the different hosts or servers being monitored by Dynatrace. Okay. So we have a filter section here with which we can filter the information that Dynatrace is showing by default. For example, let's say if you have 10 servers, you are only interested on five servers. So you can apply various filters that are available here to filter that information. Okay. Let's say in your organization, the applications are deployed in Windows, Linux, but for your analysis purpose, you are more interested on the Linux server, then you can go to operating system and then select the Linux operating system. Since we don't have any Linux servers where we have installed the agent, that is why it is only showing Windows filter. On the left hand side, you can see the quick filters. So these are all the same filters that we have available here. 
okay so either you can filter the information from here or you can select the information from this quick filters as well so let's say you are more interested to see all the service that are running with full stack monitoring then you can go to monitoring mode and then select the full stack so the moment you select this option then what Dynatus will do is it will only list all the servers that have full stack monitoring capabilities and at the same time you can also see the monitoring mode filter is applied in the filtered section as well so either you can choose the option from here or you can apply the filter directly from here the main purpose is to see the required information based on the filter and then on the right hand side you can see pin to dashboard that means you can pin all the information into your dashboard so we will see more about this option when we are talking about the dashboard section okay and then we have three dot here it is giving you some more information about the host feature for example if you want to monitor another host so you can click monitor another host then it will directly take you to the deploy dynatrace screen where you can pick and choose the operating system and then get the instructions to install the one agent on the server okay so in the host section we can see all the servers that are currently being monitored using Dynatrace. First, it is showing the name of the server. Okay, you might be thinking how Dynatrace is using this name, correct? So, if you go to the system settings in Windows, where we can see all the information about this particular system, like name, specification, right? So, when we are installing the Windows operating system for the first time, we might be giving some name to the system, or Windows itself will take a default name. Okay, so. When we install the OneAgent on the server, Dynatrace will use this information to show that in the Dynatrace console. Okay. In case if you don't like the original detected name, you can also rename this server inside the Dynatrace. So the way we will do the renaming is if you go to the settings, just to let you know that in real time we will not have this luxury to rename the servers, right? I mean if you want to change the server name, then you may need to work with the Dynatrace administrators because the settings option will be disabled to application users by default. Okay. And then under monitoring section, go to host naming and here you need to create a rule. So once you define the rule based on the Dynatrace will rename the host name. Let's add a new rule. Let's say the rule name is Windows Server Name. Okay. You can give anything. It's just the name of the rule. And then by default, it will show you some placeholders which you can use based on the Dynatrace will rename it or if you don't want to use anything, you can give a new name as well here. For example, let's say I want to give the name of the server as Easy Travel Web Server because Easy Travel application is installed. So it might be a relevant name to give in this way. Okay. And then you need to specify where you want to apply these rules. You want to apply all these rules to all host works and technologies, right? You can leave this as default. And we need to specify the conditions where Dynatrace one agent will apply and then we need to also define a condition based on the Dynatrace one agent will evaluate all the servers that are running in the inside the environment and see which servers made this condition once it made that condition then it will apply the new name to that server okay so let's say host group name equals easy travel NFT. so we want the hosts that are running with this host group has to be renamed as easy travel web server so that is our intention okay so you can preview it so that it will show you the results before it applies the rule. So this is the original name and then this is the new name. So this is the way you can rename the, the default detected names in Dynatrace. Okay. I'm not going to apply this. I will leave it to the default name. I just wanted to show you the process of changing the server default name. Okay. And let's go back to host screen again. And then it will show you the operating system that this machine is running. This is running on Windows. So that is why it is showing Windows. And then it is telling us whether it is a physical host or virtual machine. This is a physical host. And then it will also showing us the quick information about the this server or this machine operating system performance. Like what is the CPU usage, what is the memory usage, disk latency and the network traffic. So this is the information you can quickly see. When we are doing the performance testing, we need to make sure that all the servers in the performance testing environment are monitored by Dynatrace. So you can come to this host screen and then quickly verify if all of your servers are showing in this console. If any server is missing, then you can talk to administrator and then add the monitoring to the server as well. Next, let's click on this host link. So that will take you to the detailed information of this particular machine. Okay. On the top, we can see the name of the host and then the monitoring mode. So there are two types of monitoring mode that generally we can see on all the servers one full stack and another one infrastructure the main difference is with the infrastructure mode the agent is only monitoring the OS level health metrics like cpu memory disk network etc whereas if you 
install the agent with full stack monitor then dynatrace will also monitor all the processes running on this machine okay so if you want to have a deep monitoring on all the services then you need to make sure that the server is installed with the full stack monitoring and then we can see the host group configuration so this is the name that we defined when we install the agent on the server and then it is also showing what are all the management zones that this server is applicable and on the right hand side you can see three dots here it will show you a menu where you can access different settings or different other configurations of this server okay so we will go to the classic page so in the old versions dynatrace used to display the information in this way if you are using the old versions of dynatrace then you, you might be familiar with this screen we'll quickly go through the screen and then we'll compare this with the latest version that we just saw okay so here also it is showing the name of the server and then uptime since when the server or the machine is up and running and next we can see three dots here when we click this it will show you additional options which we can use for this host analyze process connections means we can analyze all the different processes running on the server and how they are communicating with the other process okay and then you can make some changes to this host by going to settings so if we click settings these are all the different settings that we can modify for example if you go to host monitoring and then go to monitor mode it will show you full stack so if you don't want full stack you can change it to infrastructure again we will not have this luxury to change any settings as an application user in real time so these settings will be controlled by the dynatrace administrators okay since we have full access in this saas environment we can make use of this to understand what are all the different settings that we can use for each entity so here you have an option to exclude disk so let's say you are you don't want to monitor any specific disk on the server then you can add that rule so that dynatrace will exclude that particular disk and you can also specify anomaly detection this is especially useful when you are doing the production monitoring so we will define some thresholds for the usage let's say by default it will be use the automatic baselines you can also make it some static thresholds by saying that let's say you want to trigger an alert when cpu reaches to 80% so you can define those kind of settings in this anomaly detection and in one agent updates you can also push the latest version right now we have the latest version here but in real time we might be running two three versions behind the latest version of dynatrace to make sure that there are no surprises so in that case if you want to upgrade to latest version you can go to one agent update and then make the changes so these are all the different settings since we will not have this access in real time i'm not going in detail for each and every option but you can go through each and every option and then try to understand because in every option they will give you the details like what exactly we can do with these settings okay so we'll go back to host so when we click the host it will take you to the latest design you will go to the classic page again and in every host dynatrace will detect the different properties of that mission so you can see them here by expanding the properties and tag so you can see what is the windows operating system running on this mission and what is the detected name what is the one agent version that is running on this host. so this is the one agent version okay if somebody is asking which one agent version is installed on the server you can go to that server properties and tags and then check the one agent version and then it will also detect the architecture of this machine in which data center it is running and what is the host group it is configured on this server ip address of this server logical cpu cores in which management zone this server is associated and what is the monitoring mode it is installed and how many physical cpu cores so this is pretty much the configuration information of this particular machine or the server okay so this properties and tags will also help us sometimes if you want to know more about the particular server if somebody is asking what is the ip address of that server then you can go to this properties and tags and then look for the ip address okay and then this is the infographic view okay here we can see different metrics of the server the current cpu usage memory usage network information and then disk so if you click the cpu so it will show you the graphs of the cpu and here you can see the breakdown what is the idle time user time and the system cpu time okay and then similarly if you click memory you can get the memory usage matrix memory usage page fault and swap usages and then network information what is the traffic how many packets it is being transmitted what is the quality and then connectivity and you can also see the disk information okay what is the throughput what is the disk latency disk space usage so if you go back to cpu let's say you want to understand the problematic process in this machine right what is the highest consuming process on this machine 
So you can click the consuming process button that will take you to this screen where Dynatrace will list all the different processes running on this machine along with the CPU usage. Okay. So the process name and the type of the process, how much CPU in being used for the process. You can see memory, traffic, retransmissions, connectivity and IO. If you click on type, Dynatrace also monitors the CPU that are the memory consumption of Dynatrace one agent. So here these are all the Dynatrace related processes. Since we have installed the agent, it is running some processes to monitor the health of this machine. Okay. So it is also tracking how much CPU or memory usage of that particular process. We always need to make sure that the agent process is as less as possible. Let's say in your server, if the CPU usage of Dynatrace is taking more than the application, then that is a problematic situation. You need to talk to Dynatrace administrators to understand why it is taking that much of CPU. Okay. And one another important thing is let me open one documentation link. Dynatrace important processes. Okay. So, so the way Dynatrace is listing all the processes here, it is detecting these processes important processes. A process to be qualified as important, it needs to follow certain conditions. So that they have mentioned in the documentation. Okay. So these are all the conditions that any process is meeting then Dynatrace considers that process as important process. So for example, the process average CPU should be more than 5% and the max memory should be more than 5%. Network traffic should be more than 5%. Any process do not meet the above criteria and therefore are not considered as important process are aggregated and labeled as other processes. So if you scroll all the way to end, you can see other processes. So these are all the different processes that are not meeting those requirements. That is why Dynatrace is grouping them or labeling them as other processes. Sometimes in real time when we are doing load testing, we might be seeing the more CPU usage for this other processes category. Then the application users might be asking or the application team might be asking what is the other process here. So then you can explain this why Dynatrace is considering them as other process. Okay. And if you want to know these details, then you need to extract the one agent logs to get the breakdown of these other processes. So if we go back to the previous screen, if you click memory, then you can click consuming process, then it will also show you the memory usage. So you can even go from here as well. Like this is the CPU usage because everything is grouped as one. So you can quickly navigate from here as well. Memory, even the network information also, you can go it from here. Okay. So the connectivity should be always 100%. If it is less than 100%, then there is a problem. So we need to investigate why it is not 100%. Okay. And then if you click the disk, then it will show you the different metrics of disk monitoring. And then if you click the contributing disk, then it will give you the details of the different disk the Dynatrace is monitoring. In this system, we have three disks. C, D, E and then what is the space usage? In C, 57% of space is already consumed and D is 28% and then E is 0.14. So if the disk is full, then the performance will be low because sometimes applications will try to write something on the disk. If there is no space available, then the performance of that application running on that machine will be down. Okay. So you need to make sure that you have sufficient disk space available. If it is full, then you can work with the infrastructure team to clean up some of the unused files so that it will get some space. So if you go back to the previous screen, so this is all about the different metrics which are available in the infographic view. Okay. With this information, you quickly understand how much CPU is being used and how much memory is being used. Okay. So before you do the load test, you need to make sure that the CPU is in normal condition. That means you don't want to see a CPU as 90% even before the start of the test. Otherwise, there is no point of running the test, right? Because the moment you put load, then CPU will go to 100%. Then there may be chance of transaction failures or the slow response. Then. Okay. So in that case, you need to understand why 90% of CPU usage is registered on the server without any activity and then see what is the problematic process. So you can talk to the infrastructure team. So they will investigate and they will do some cleanup to bring the usage back to normal. And on the right hand side, you can see the problems information. So right now there are no problems. So the problem means if there is a deviation with the defined threshold, then Dynatrace will trigger that as a problem. So we can see that information here. So whatever the information we are going to see in the problem section that it belongs to this particular server. Okay. And then the vulnerabilities 
security vulnerability there are two types third party vulnerabilities and code level so since we have application security feature enabled on this mission dynatrace has also detected what are all the different third party vulnerabilities that team needs to fix it so you can click here view all third party vulnerabilities that will take us to the application security third party vulnerability page so here we can see the list of the vulnerability so if you click any vulnerability it will give you more details about that so what is the vulnerable why dynatrace detected as vulnerability and which process groups are impacted and how to fix they will also give the recommendations so this information will be helpful to security team to understand the different vulnerabilities that the servers are having and then they will suggest the respective team to fix those vulnerabilities okay similarly you can also see the code level vulnerabilities from here right now there are no code level vulnerabilities so which is a good sign okay so you can also get this information from this host screen and then next we have availability section let's change the time frame to last seven days so here we can see availability metrics for this particular mission since i'm letting down the mission every night so that is why it is considering that as offline but in real time the servers will always up and running right unless there is a maintenance activity the server should be in the running state so if you are seeing this kind of graph in real time then there is a problem so you need to talk to infrastructure team to understand why the server is being offline regularly okay so the blue color means running and the red means offline for some reason one agent is uninstalled so it will show you the data for some days so in those days the availability will be shown as unmonitored and then it will show all the different processes running on this mission and it will categorize based on the technology so in this mission we have some dotnet process apache tomcat process ias process asp.net one agent sdk and then http server you can also click all process which will take you to the processes page which we have seen just before so here you can understand the process consumption based on cpu and memory okay if any particular process is taking more cpu then you can investigate more into that process for example if you click the windows system process then it will show you the details of the windows system processes so the name of the process and then again it will show the properties and tax information what is the technology secondary technology and then bit nice host group management zone what are the ports it is using and then process group here also we have infographic view we can see what are the different processes talking to this particular windows system process and the traffic connectivity if there are services running against this process it will also show the information and the operating system the cpu and memory and where this particular process is running so this is the host and which process is talking to so right now it is not talking to any process that's why it's showing as zero process in case if it is talking to any other process then it will show the process list as well and below we can see the system performance cpu memory worker process io so these metrics will help us to understand what is happening with this process on the right we can also see the same thing problems availability of this process and events so events are some activities that dynatrace is detecting on this mission so yesterday at seven o'clock this process got crashed so that is why it is showing that information okay so you need to make sure that your application is not crashed regularly if so then you can talk to the infrastructure team to understand why that particular processor application is crashing and then if the log monitoring is available then it will also show the different logs that dynatrace is monitoring so this view is same for any process so if you go back to the previous screen and then let's select the easy travel backend jar so this is the application process so if you expand the property syntax it will show you the details of the technology with version information one agent version build version and then exe path host group jvm information ports and now you can see there are five process are talking to this apache tomcat if you click this it will show you all the calling processes okay like front end process talking to this back end so that information is showing up here and this is the network information the connectivity traffic quality number of tcp requests all that information can be seen here and then there are 14 services running on this against this process so if you click that it will show you all the different process what are all the different web requests and then web services so you can see authentication service book ser booking service configuration service journey service so you can also go to the services from here but in this view we can quickly see what are all the different services are running on this particular process okay similarly the performance of the particular process so the system performance cpu memory io and if you go to jvm metrics 
you can also see the garbage collection suspension heap memory matrix g1 and g2 matrix and number of threads you can also see app server matrix like the number of web requests that are running on this machine and if you click further details you can also get some more details of this different matrix okay we will generally go to this level of monitoring when we have any issue let's say you are troubleshooting some response time issue then you can quickly go through different metrics and then understand where the problem is okay on the right hand side if dynatus detect any problems for this process it will show that information here and then the vulnerabilities availability events okay now let's go back to the host screen and here also events so these events relate to the particular host so if you open here we can see different categories right so dynatus has detected 16 hosts are on monitoring unavailable that means the one agent is not able to send any data to the cluster so that is why it is reporting this metric so this has happened when either the server is down or the agent is down okay and you can also see some other events memory resource exhausted if you click this it will show you the details of that memory resource as well okay so you can use this information if you are troubleshooting something and then share with the application or the infrastructure team similarly if there are any log monitoring enabled for this host that will show up here so in real time we will use this option to understand the cpu memory disk usage of the server and then what are all the different process running on that server and what is the problematic so this is all about the host screen okay so far we have seen this in the classic page so let's go back to the latest design so to go to the latest design click on the three dots and then select the go to new host page so the metrics whatever we have seen in the classic page are pretty much available in this new design as well it just they reorganize the page okay so you can see the properties and tags of that machine and then it is showing how many problems that are available so there were 19 problems because i have changed the timestamp to last seven days so if you click that it will show you the list of the problems so you can use this section to understand why these problems triggered and then you can investigate further and then it is also showing the vulnerabilities information availability if we have any slos created for this machine it will show that information and then we can also add one to this machine this is for the incident management or the alert management purposes okay and then we can see the uptime of the server since when the server is up and running and the cpu available memory network information we can also see the incoming connection information from here and then outgoing since no other process is talking to this or this process is not talking to anything else it is just showing us content zero host you can expand this to see the metrics since there is no data available it is not showing anything to us next we can see the host performance so you can see the cpu usage when you click this drop down it will show the other metrics as well you can select any one of the metrics to get the details for example if you want to see the disk latency you can select the disk latency then dynatus will show the relevant metrics to you and you can also choose the aggregation whether you want to see the average minimum max okay or even percentile 10th percentile 75th percentile 90 percentile so based on the aggregation then dynatus will show this metrics accordingly and same thing memory usage you can use the cpu here or you can use any other metrics and the network throughput so this is the host performance and then we have process analysis section where we can see the processes breakdown in terms of cpu and memory and then it is also showing the list of the processes information here okay so you can go to any specific process by clicking the process link and also see the state of this process so in your server if you are seeing something like this or this then that means there is some issue for example this one you can see the message that this process is not monitored okay so if you are seeing this message for your application then that means your application is not being fully monitored so you need to talk to administrators and then figure out why the application is not monitored okay and then we can also see the disk analysis metrics and then breakdown of those different disks like in this machine we are seeing three different disks that are currently monitored c d and e and then the relevant respective metrics of those disks and then we have network analysis and memory analysis we can also see the events information here and the logs so these are all the same metrics that we just saw with the classic page but it's just that they have rearranged the data in a different way okay on the right hand side we have different sections as well for example if you want to go to memory analysis you don't need to scroll all the way to end you can just click the memory analysis that will take you to the memory analysis section based on your requirement you can choose the respective metrics and then you know understand what's happened at the time okay so this is all about the 
host page. So you can use this page to understand what are all the different servers that are monitored currently and then the performance of that server. Okay. Next, we will move on to the application observability section and then try to deep dive the different features that are commonly used by the performance testers. Okay. So the first one from the application observability is front end. So front end monitoring nothing but the client side monitoring. So if you are interested to understand how the application is performed on the client side, whether it could be a browser or mobile app. So we can use the front end feature to monitor the client side performance and understand if they have any issues. Okay. So by default, Dynatrace will group all the front end application monitoring into my web application. And if you don't want everything to be grouped in one application, you can also create rules and then separate your application into a separate application. For example, we are having easy travel on this system running. So we want all the easy travel requests to be separated. Then we can create our own application and then track all the requests inside that application. Okay. So in the application section, we can see what are all the different applications currently monitored in this environment. So we only have one, the default one, my web application, and then it is also showing the relevant other metrics. Okay. And then we have monitoring settings. So if we click this, it will take us to the monitoring overview page where we can either enable or disable the web application monitoring. If we turn it off, then Dynatrace won't track everything into this my web application. So what you need to do is you need to have a separate applications created to monitor your own application. Again, that settings page we will not have access to that so we need to work with the Dynatrace administrative teams in case if we don't want my web application to be monitored by default okay and then we have three dots so here we have an option to create a mobile app or we can create custom application we can also edit the detection rules okay so if we click the edit detection rules then again Dynatrace will take us back to the settings page so here we can add an item let's say we can specify the pattern so this is the option so Let's say you want to track all the application with URL easytravel.com. Okay. So this is the domain name that we see, right? In the URL, if this piece of string contains, then you want to monitor that request. And then you can either use that as an existing application or you can create your own application. So when you say create a new application, then it will ask you to enter the application name. You can say easy travel. Then what Dynatrace will do is any user sending a request with a URL which contains easytravel.com, then Dynatrace will track that as, as easy travel request okay so this will help us to track the applications differently and understand the client side performance so let's discard this for this demo we will use the my web application as a reference to go over the different metrics let's go back to the applications page along with the my web application it is also providing use of metrics like app decks, actions load action xhr actions errors and third party so we will also see this metrics in detail now so let's click on the my web application so here we will get the more details of the application so it is giving us the name of the application and then detection rules since this is the default application there are no rules everything will be grouped into this but for your case if you have created some detection rules then we can see those rules as well here okay and then if you want to analyze the individual user sessions you can click here so that will take you to user sessions page and here you can understand all the different user sessions and then here you can track different user sessions okay we will come back to this later and then you can also pin all the metrics to a dashboard by clicking the pin to dashboard and if you click the three dots then it will show you some additional options which we can use for this application so you can edit this application or you can do a health check you can add an slo you can see this application in the smartscape view as well okay and then dynatrace will show all the frameworks that it detected for this application so every application will use certain frameworks right so Dynatrace will detect those frameworks and then will show up here so if you want to go to the settings you can also go here by clicking the framework settings then it will show you all the different settings so from here also you can control like if you don't want to monitor some specific framework or you want to monitor some specific framework you can also do this so let's go back to the application here the metrics are defined into two groups performance analysis and then user behavior so in the performance analysis section we can understand what are all the different browsers that our application users are using so if you see here it is saying 55 percent chrome top browser so that means in our user base 55 percent of the users are using chrome to access our application so if you click this it will give you the breakdown so go to desktop and here you can see the breakdown so 55.24 percent users are using chrome browser and then 13 percent users are using firefox 13 percent are using ie 7 percent are using safari 5 percent are using microsoft so this information will definitely help developers to see 
especially the front end developers if they are making any changes on the front end side to see if they have any browser related dependency right so that they can understand what is the highest use browser for their application and then apply those changes accordingly okay and similarly if it is a mobile app then we can also see the mobile app information and if some bots are using our application we can also get that metric you can also see the browser breakdown on the below with different details next we can see the users type so if you click the 98 percent real user so here it will tell you whether the application users are real users or some bots that means somebody created some automated scripts which are triggering requests to our application so here 98 percent are real users and then we can also get some additional metrics of those user types like real users and robots here you can also analyze the performance by clicking the analyze performance so it will tell you more details about the different users and the browser types and the different user actions that real users are accessing okay we can also get the geolocation breakdown from which location most of the users are accessing the application so this will help us to understand where our users are so that in our performance testing we can have a load generator or the worker node on that location and then simulate the request from there so this will definitely help us to understand how the application being used from the geolocation perspective okay and then dynatrace has categorized the user actions into three categories load actions xhr actions and then custom actions so in the dynatrace documentation we go to the user actions page here they have defined the details of the actions so a load action is defined as an actual page loading in your browser so that means if we access any page it is the time that is taking to load the entire page in our browser okay if you type an url in your browser and user enter a load action occurs during this action type many resources are loaded including images html css so whatever the metric that we are seeing against the load action so that is the page loading time and similarly we have xhr action so dynatrace continuously track the user interactions with each page if user interaction leads to xml http request or fetch calls xhr action is created so that means if user action is interacting with this xml http request then dynatrace will consider that as an xhr action and then it will track the performance accordingly and we can also create some custom user actions as well okay so if you go back to the application here we can see the load action and then xhr action and then custom action and these metrics are shown for everything so if i go back to real user so here also we can see for real users what is the load action time xhr action time and then custom action okay and then app dex app dex is nothing but application performance index so if you go to wikipedia so here they clearly explain what exactly the app dex means so app dex is an open standard developed by an alliance of companies for measuring performance of software applications in computing some group of companies work together and then set a standard called application performance index to measure the performance of different applications so dynatrace is using this app deck standard to understand the application performance so they have created some scores for each performance level so if the performance is excellent then the score should be 0.9421 if it is good then it should be between 0.85 to 94 and if it is fair it has to be in this range if it is unacceptable it should be less than 0.5 so these settings can be adjusted in dynatrace if you don't want to follow the default standards then you can also modify these settings according to your sls okay and as a performance user we will not have access to modify these settings it has to be done by the dynatrace administrators so for our application what is the app dex that, that it is showing here okay if you click that it will give you the details so 76.84 percent users are happy with our application performance and then 15 percent users are having the unacceptable performance so we can understand why those 15 percent are having the unacceptable performance so you can click the analyze app dex and then it will give you the details so here if you sort the app tech metric then it will show you all the different categories these are the user actions are having the unacceptable performance for example this particular user action it took 12.37 seconds and this journey page loading took 21 seconds so that is why dynatrace is considering as unacceptable okay you can also do this analysis and understand what are all the poorly performed user actions and then see why they are performing in such way and then go back to the my web application and you can also do analysis related to the client side errors so if you click the errors then it will show you all the different errors like request errors javascript errors any custom errors you can also analyze these errors by clicking analyze by type so here you can see the what are all the different errors whether it is a request or custom or javascript and how many errors are happening with 
different user actions and without user actions and what is the origin what is the frequency right if you scroll a little bit down you can also see the top 100 user actions with the error rate information so this will also help us to understand what are the different errors that are happening on the browser side so the developers can see if they can isolate the root cause and then fix fix it to improve the performance on the client side and then we can also see the resource information so if our application is interacting with third party resources we can also get those metrics here so cd and resources first party resources sometimes the resources are coming from third party so those will be listed under third party resources since we don't have any third party resources it is showing no data available everything is hosted within the application so that's why everything is showing in the first party resources and we can also see the breakdown images scripts css files others okay and you can also get the action duration by resource type and we can also see all the different application called services by these user actions okay so those break down also here the service name and the response time number of requests for this service and the error rate so from here also you can go to the services page and then do further analysis with regards to this particular service so this is all about the performance analysis here you can find the user actions per minute action duration app dex rating errors are third party resources and service information if you click the user behavior then here we can get the different user active sessions bounce rate or conversion goals etc okay so if you click on the 98% top users here it is giving us the user breakdown how many are the new users and how many are the returning users so based on the metrics it looks like 98% are the new users and only 1% are the existing users okay so this will also help us to design the scenario in such a way that how many times we have to simulate the login scenario if it is new years means every user is trying to log into the application right so and then here also you can see the breakdown of active users how many of them are new users and how many of them are returning users similarly you can see the user types by clicking the the second matrix so here we can see the real users are 97 percent so these are the actual application users and then these are the robot and then the breakdown of those user type from which country most of the sessions are happening so here you can see 2000 sessions are happening from united states and 210 sessions are happening from china and so on so this will also help you to understand your application user base okay by clicking the active sessions we can get the breakdown of active sessions as well as the peak activity intervals here peak activity intervals means in our application what is the peak interval where most of the user sessions are active so this is the peak session that we need to consider even for our load testing right so in production we will use this time frame to understand different application services metrics like how many requests are happening in an hour and then we'll try to simulate the similar load in our performance test environment as well and similarly we have entry action other action exit actions and then bounce rate overall conversion metrics also available here so you can also see the relevant metrics of top three bounces and then entry action and exit action what is the action that users are using to enter to the application and then where they are exiting from the application okay sometimes they might be closing the application after loading a particular page without properly logging out so that will be considered as an exit action okay you can also get more details by clicking view full details so you can also use these metrics to create a scenario in such a way to mimic the real user behavior okay so this is all about the user behavior so if you go back to the performance analysis so we can also see some composite metrics across response time so this is on the browser side right what is the total user action duration and how much time it is taking to load the page speed index these metrics will definitely give some insights how the application is performing on the actual browser you can also compare them with any specific time frame by clicking the compare to previous time frame or you can even further analyze this performance by clicking the analyze performance so here you can see the metrics you can also change the filters for example if you are more interested in xhr action you can select that and then it will show the metrics and here also you can select whether you want to see this metrics for real users and also 90 percent of the time how the xhr action performance so you can also use this filter to do some more analysis for this particular metric okay and then it will show the top three pages so these are the top three pages used by the applications and also show the top three domains so since we are using the easy travel configuration ui to generate load so that is why it is showing as host.docker.internal okay for your case it may be showing your application domain information so you can understand if this application is getting requests from other domain or not by going to this included domain section you can understand in which domain this particular application is getting the request and on the right hand side 
same like host page dynatrace will also show you the problems information so these are all the different problems happen to this particular web application and then you can also see the top three user actions so these are the so these are the actions that most of the users are performing like validating their card searching and credit card so this can be a scenarios for us in the performance test executions you can also get more details by clicking view field details so here we can show you the top 100 actions and you can change the data based on the filter for example if you want to see the top user action based on the duration so it will list the user actions based on the duration okay by default it is selected on the total time consumed if any user action is very critical then you can mark them as a key user action so that way we can quickly go through that user action performance okay and if you go back to the application here we can also see the top errors so these are the top errors that are happening in the application so csp violation csp violation http 403 so this will also help us what is happening on the browser side so we should share these errors information to the front-end developer so they can understand and then fix these issues and we can also get the events information so if we expand this it will show you different events happening for this web application so we can also use this events for analysis purposes and if you go to user behavior and here also the metrics on the right hand side will change right based on the option that we have selected right now i have selected the active user session so that is why it is showing me top three bounces and top entry and exit actions events okay so some of the sections will be changed based on the type of the option that you have selected here if you are in the performance analysis then these options will change and if you are in the user behavior then these options will also be changed okay so now what we will do is we will try to analyze a user session by going to analyze user sessions this is another thing that we typically do when somebody is complaining that the application performance is very slow on the browser. So we can pick any particular user session to understand why that user is complaining that the performance of their application is slow when, when in the low test we don't have any issues. And one other thing that we always need to remember is when we are doing the low test, we are not measuring the metrics from the client side perspective. That means we don't know what is happening on the browser side. So our load test tools, whether it is JMeter or load, it will only measure the performance of the service from the server side perspective. But after the user getting that request from the server, browser will do some other activities like it will render the resources and then display it as a web page. So that activity will not be part of the transaction response time that we are getting it from the tool. That may be one of the reason in your test the results might be within the acceptable SLS whereas the actual users are still complaining that they have some issues. In that situation you can come to the session, user session and then track any one of the session to understand what is happening on the client side. Okay. So if you click any one of the session it will show you the details. So here you need to go to user session time range that will give you the more details of this user session like how much duration the session is, the user information and the type of the application in which operating system that user machine is running and what browser the user is using and what is the screen resolution that browser has, IP address, geolocation, all the information we can see it here. And then in the below we can see the different steps. So these are all the different steps that user perform. So for example this particular transaction Abdex rating is showing us first rating, so we can go to the details and understand the different times, you know, how much time it is taking on the server time, network time, okay. We can also perform waterfall analysis by clicking the perform waterfall analysis. This will also give you more details about the application. So we can see some errors on the browser side, okay. So all this information can be shared with the developers so that they can troubleshoot and try to analyze more about this issue. You go back to user sessions. We can also change the view by clicking the view in the analysis over time. So here we can see different sessions based on the time frame so blue color sessions are completed sessions and the live sessions are the active user sessions okay so you can change the time frame for yesterday this is the user behavior here also you can quickly understand what is the peak time since this application is running on the personal laptop and i'm not using it 24 by 7 so that is why i'm not getting the metrics but in your case in your production you might be getting the data for the user session so using this you can figure out what is the peak user session and try to get the metrics of the peak user time frame for your application and then simulate the load accordingly okay so on the right you can also see different metrics like user experience score errors conversion goals users browsers this is all we have seen right in the applications the same thing they are representing here as well so the front end and the user sessions also available in digital experience so if you click web 
it will take us to the same screen where we have seen from the front end right so this is the same page and similarly if you go to session segmentation this is the user session screen for some reason in the classic interface they have duplication in the application observability as well as the digital experience i think with the latest interface they have removed it so let's quickly go back to the latest interface and then go to apps and go to application observability here we don't see the front end but if you go to the digital experience we can see front end so they have removed the front end from application observability with the latest version okay but in the classic you can see the same thing in multiple places so don't get confused so this is all about the front end and the user sessions or session segmentation okay so next thing that we are going to deep dive is services okay so services will be available under application observability and this is one of the most commonly used feature so everyone whenever there is an issue when they want to troubleshoot what exactly happened with their transaction this is the first place to go to so whenever there is an issue for any particular transaction during the load test generally the performance assessors will come to the services page and then do some analysis to understand the root cause of the response time deviation okay so click services so that will show you the screen here by default based on the filters it will show you the list of the services for that application since this is a demo environment and we don't have any application other than easy travel so we can see all the easy travel applications in real time you will be only seeing the services which you have access to okay so if you are working for abc application then the dynatrix administrator team might be giving access to you to the abc application so you will only see the services belongs to that particular abc application okay and here we have an option to view the top web requests of this application and then from here we can go to distributed traces so even in the application observability we have an option to go to distributed traces from here or from here it will go to the same page even inside the services we have an option to go to distributed traces so for the same thing we can go from multiple places okay and then we have an option to go to the multi dimensional analysis from here and then if we expand this we can have some configuration options again these settings might not be available to us in real time but since this is a demo environment we have an option to see those settings as well okay and then you can also pin this services to a dashboard so that you can quickly see the health of the services in your dashboard so we will see that dashboard thing in the upcoming session and we have an option to filter the services based on the different types let's say you are only interested to see the booking services in that case you can type name and then type booking so dynatrix will filter any services which are named with booking okay or even you can use this quick filters for example you are only interested on the web request services so you can click this so it will show you all the web request services and then you can also see the problem impact if any services is impacted you can also filter them using this problem impact filter and you can also filter based on the technology so the filtering is basically to to limit the number of items that it is showing in the screen okay so based on your requirement you can filter it and then do further analysis so here it is showing all the services list you can see the name of the services and the response time median for that services again this response time median is based on the time filter for example if we select the last 30 minutes so the response time median for that service may change okay and then we have slowest 10% which is nothing but the 90th percentile response time for this particular service and then if the service has any failure rate we can see that as well so some services has 0% failure that means there are no failures but some we can see 15% and then the number of requests for this service for the given duration okay and then we can perform some additional actions for this server so if you click the three dots it will show you some further details like you can find out the backtrace of the service you can do the failure analysis you can find the response time outliers you can compare this performance with the previous time stamps and you can go to distributed traces from here you can do some exception analysis you can also do the multi dimensional analysis for the service okay so let's increase the time frame to today so that we can see more service and then let's select the booking services so we want to do the analysis for the booking service so let's go to booking service so during the requirement gathering session you also need to understand what are all the different service names for the application that you are working so that it will be easy for you to understand whether dynatrix is showing those services if they have any issues then you can work with dynatrix administrative team to understand the root cause okay so now let's click on the booking service so the view that we are seeing is the classic design and again there's an improved version of this page is available if you want to try it you can just toggle this so it will change back to the new design okay first we will go through the options with the 
classic design and then we will quickly check how the new design for this service screen looks like okay like any other entity here it will show the name of the service and then we have option to see some more options for the service like we can go to smartscape view from here and then we can configure some additional settings for the service we can pin the service to dashboard we can do some process crash details and we can also see the memory dump details we can add SLU to the service okay some settings may not be available to us in the real time because some requires the administrative privileges especially for the settings okay so if we quickly go to settings here we can see the name of the service and then failure detection we can also configure some value detections so for example if you go to http parameters so by default dynatrace consider any http response code between 500 to 599 as the server side header and anything 400 to 599 as the client side so you can also configure this based on your need okay and then you can also create some naming rules for your request here and then you can also specify some thresholds for the service so by default the detection mode for the response time degradation will be automatic so the way dynat test works is it will analyze the previous week traffic and then based on that it will try to compare the current week traffic if there are any deviation then it will detect as a problem okay so if you want to override then you can also define some static thresholds you can also create some key requests to the service so that we will get some additional benefits from dynat test for monitoring those services so we can have a long retention of the service we can use them in the dashboards etc okay and then we can also mute some requests if we think that those are not really required so these service settings in real time we will not have access again we need to work with the administrative teams to make any changes to this service so let's quickly go back to our service and then we can see the properties and tags for this service so these are some of the tags that we can use for filters so Dynatrace detected the service name as booking service again the name is based on the configuration in the application and and we can see what is the type of the service it is a web service and the process group that it is and the process group information of the service and the server's main technology it is developed using apache tomcat and then some other properties for this particular booking service okay and this is the infographic view so here we can see on the left these are the entities that are talking to this particular booking services so there are zero applications at this point talking to booking service however if we click five services we can see these are the calling services to booking services so some customer front-end service are talking to this booking and easy travel service etc you can also see what are all the calling services and if you have any network clients talking to the service that information can be seen here and similarly this is the actual service where exactly this process is running and which host it is running and if the release is being tracked we can also see the build version release version here and then this particular book booking service is talking to the outgoing these are the four services called by this booking service credit card validation dot net and it is also calling to easy travel business database service so any interaction with the database dynatrace will record that as a database service so using the database service we can analyze queries procedures and transaction information okay so if any particular service is interacting with the database then dynatrace will show as a call database service okay from here also you can go to that service so this is the database service you can see the sql transaction queries and procedures modification etc next we have request section here we can see the response time of this booking service over the duration that we have selected and the failure rate how much cpu the service is consuming and how much throughput it is generating okay and on the right hand side we can see the problem information with the current duration we don't have any problem so that's why it is showing no problems and then no recent hotspot detected and we can also create a multi-dimensional analysis views and then save them here so that whenever we open the service instead of creating that multi-dimensional analysis we can simply access from here okay right now we don't have a multi-dimensional analysis that is why it is showing as empty and then sometimes for analysis purpose we need to understand some dependencies right so those dependencies can be accessed from here for example you can see the service flow so if you click the service flow dynatrace will show you how it is interacting with other services so the booking service is interacting with credit card validation service dot net backend easy travel and it is also interacting with other five services and these services again interacting with different services for example credit card validation is interacting with the database service dot net backend easy travel service interacting with the configuration and other four services so this will also help you to understand how the service is flowing through in the environment okay and again what are the metrics that we are seeing here 
is for this particular duration you can also change it based on your requirement and then by default it will show you the response time breakdowns for example average response time of this booking service is 1.39 seconds so out of that 45 percent is contributing by the credit card validation service and 29 percent is a .NET backend service and remaining 26 is for the other five services you can also see these metrics in terms of throughput so if you click throughput then dynatrix will show you the metrics so the total requests were 12.8k and then out of that how many were going to easy travel business credit card validations and then also the other services okay and on the right hand side we have an option to go to distributed traces we have an option to view the web request details of values backtrace response time and then outlier so we will see these options from the other screens as well but dynat has given that flexibility to access them from here as well okay and it is showing the booking service details like the average response time average time spent in called services number of requests failed requests and calls to other service you can also see the infrastructure information from here like which process group or which host this service is running so this is all about the service flow and then if you go back we can go to backtrace so if you click view backtrace then it will show you what are all the different things that calling to booking service so this is the booking service so easy travel service is calling booking and if you expand this easy travel we can also see the breakdown so easy travel web server and then let's expand this so my web application is calling easy travel web server and then that web server is calling this easy travel service and again the easy travel service is calling to booking service so we are tracking the services in the reverse way okay so that is why they are calling it as backtrace so we can also see how many incoming requests failed requests and then outgoing requests so we can also you know access some features from here which we will do it from the other screens okay and similarly if you click any particular service here it will show you further more details in the down the line so you can see these are the requests from the easy travel web services and you can also see the instances from where these requests are coming from and you can get the reference pages and proxy information you can also do some analysis from here as well like you can access service flow distributed traces response time outliers web requests from here so they have given these things in every way so that user don't need to go to service page to access particular feature right you can access from here you can access from the service page okay let's go back to booking service again now let's go to distributed traces so we can also access the distributed traces from the application observability directly here so here it will show you the different requests along with the some details like at what time the request started and how much response time is how much time it took to process that request what is the http method it has used and the response time code and here also we have some options to go to service flow backtrace details failures we can also find out the response time hotspot okay so let's sort it based on the response time let's say the store booking services took 5.29 seconds so let's analyze this particular request so let's click on the store booking which will give you the details so this is the complete trace of this particular store booking request so this is the initial request i think this is from the rest call booking mobile from there it is calling to this apache service and then that is calling the store booking mobile and you can also see the time it takes on the right hand side and then that store booking mobile is called this get enable plugins and again there is a request to store booking and there are two database calls and then there is validation credit card service being called and that calls one database and then there is a payment some database interaction so you can see the complete breakdown and understand what is the problematic area so here out of all the requests you can see the problematic seems to be the store booking store booking took most of the time right so that is the 5.29 seconds out of total 6.55 seconds so if you click the any particular service it will show you some more details the summary of the service the service name the request name and then host it is running operating system and also some metadata so this will help you to understand you know what are the things getting passed for this request and then we can also see the client side metadata request headers response headers one agent attributes and then one agent version information you can also get the timing breakdown here so you can see self time breakdown and then response time 5.29 seconds so out of 5.29 i think credit card validation took 1.4 seconds and then the call to dotnet backend took the most of the time right 4.14 seconds so if you want to know more about server side response time client side response time processing time dynatrix has that detail so let's open the documentation service analyzing timing so here they are telling what is the response time server side and client side processing time execution time so i will share you all these links in the description so don't worry about 
these pages links but you can very well go through you know whatever the questions you have in the documentation first to understand it more okay and then you can also see the code level information like what are all the things that are getting executed so this information may help to the developer if there is time consuming method that we have identified and then if logs are monitored we can also see it here and if there are any exceptions to the service you can see that in the error section okay so let's close this let's go back let's do the analysis again so this time what we will do click three dots and then do the response time hotspot so here it will tell you the breakdown of this response time right on a quick way like you can see 5.29 seconds was the total response time for this request out of them most of the time was interaction with services and queues and here we can also see that calls to this particular dot net backend easy travel service took 4.14 second and then calls to validate credit card is took 1.4 seconds so these are the two problematic services so we can share this information to developers so that they will understand what is going on you can also click that to get the more details from here again we have an option to go to different views like we can go to service flow we can go to backtrace we can go to distributed traces so let's go back to the distributed trace of this particular request let's sort this again and then select three dots go to method hotspots so here we can see the network io time was the most of the time 79 seconds and then disk io is 21 percent and they will also give the call hierarchy so you can enable this and then to understand where exactly the most of the time is taking so you see the call to payment service was taking 79.5 percent so this might be the problematic here you can also get the hotspot so these are the methods that we can share it with developers so that they can understand what exactly is the issue okay next we have web request so it will take us to the multi-dimensional analysis screen so where we can do different analysis right so on the service these are the different uh, requests are getting triggered so there are get recent booking store booking check credit card booking summary tenant and get booking page by tenant so this is the number of requests per minute and the count we can also go to different screens from here as well okay and then from here we can do the different analysis for example right now it is showing the analysis based on the request count so if you are interested to see the same view in terms of response time then you can click the metric and then select the response time now whatever the details that we are seeing will show you based on the response time so from here we can see that store booking request is the slowest among the rest of the requests okay and even you can do some failure analysis as well you can select the failure rate if the requests are failed then it will show you those details as well here also we can see the store booking has some failures compared to others so this is the multi-dimensional analysis so you can access this from the application observability on the left or you can access from the other pages as well okay so you can do some other filters as well for example you are only interested in the store booking so you can filter that by saying the request is store booking so the analysis whatever we are going to see is only belongs to the store booking it will ignore the rest okay you can also chart them into different ways like you can use the line graph or you can use the area graph by default it will use the bar from here you can create a metric so that can be used to create a chart or add them into dashboard we can also use for alerting rslos okay and then you can also save this view so that way it will save it in the services page so next time if you want to you know, quickly check the analysis instead of recreating entire thing you can just click that link and that will open this multi-dimensional analysis page okay let's go back to booking service if there are any logs for this process group we can also see those logs here so let's click this to see if we have any logs click run query that will show you if there are any application logs so we can also access these logs from here instead of logging to server or requesting someone or using another log monitoring tools like splunk or any other tools okay so dynata has that capability to monitoring the logs also so we can have everything in one place and then we have an event section where it will show you different events for this particular service okay if the service is restarted or if the deployment change then it will log them as an event and now go to the view request from the request section so that will show you different requests belongs to booking service we already seen them in the multi-dimensional analysis but it is the same information so here also you can see the the top five contributors of this service so store booking check credit card get recent bookings get booking summary by tenant get booking page by tenant so and then their response time this is the average response time and from here also you can go to other actions like you can check the details of failures or you can go to the distributors you can do some exceptional analysis you can see the method hotspot service backtrace service flow 
okay if you are only interested to one particular request you can also filter it by clicking this so that will apply the filter so the whatever the data that we are seeing is only for this particular store booking request okay you can remove that by clicking the filter so that will take that filter out and it will show you all the contributors so by default is showing the response time data this is the average response time even you can change it to 98th percentile or 95th percentile so you can quickly understand how the response time for the 90 percent of the time and again the metrics whatever we are seeing here is for this particular selected period right this is the analyze request during so you can also change it to two hours or six hours whatever the analysis period that we have available so the numbers that we are seeing here will change based on the analysis period that we have selected we can also see the failure rate here if the service are failed it will also show you in the red we can also see http errors if we have anything and then we can see the cpu consumptions for this service and then throughput so from here also we can create a multi-dimensional analysis okay so if you click this it will open the multi-dimensional analysis page so you can also rename the service by clicking the three dots and if you click the more so we will see some options here which are already there in other pages as well we can analyze the backtrace service flow response time or hotspot and analyze outliers so let's click this so here we can do the response time analysis right now it is categorizing the response time into different groups so now let's see it is saying that there are 3.4k requests are which took more than two seconds so let's select this area and then zoom in so that it will give you more details we can see 69 requests took more than four seconds so let's select this and then zoom in so now we can see among 16 and 31 were in this range what we can do we can select this range and then we can do some other analysis like we can view the response time hotspots we can analyze the backtrace service flow or distributed service okay so this outlines will help us to get the breakdown of the service response times okay so go back and then next we have details of failures method hotspots which we already seen and then we can also compare so let's say you have executed two tests yesterday and today so you can compare the response time here for the given service right so that you can understand how this was performed yesterday and how this was performed today and you can also get some other metrics like the failure cpu load other comparison metrics as well and we can do the exceptional analysis and then top web request now let's go back to service and then we will look for a service which is failed right so let's select any service which has more failures let's take this authentication service which has five percent failures now we will try to analyze the failures so it is telling that in the current hotspots we can see some data so it is telling high failure rate 32 percent was this authenticate request okay you can also see the failure rate percentage here so view request and then go to failure rate you see whatever the request failed it is showing in the red color so you can select any one particular period and then select view details of failures so here we can see 312 requests were failed and the reasons for failing those requests and the request name and also the root cause so you can also see the stack trace so if you share this information to developer then they will understand the root cause okay so this is very handy whenever during the load test a particular service is failing so we can come to this failure analysis screen and then analyze the root cause okay so this is all about the service so this is the frequently used especially after load test if we notice any issues with any particular service so this is the place where performance systems will come and do some analysis okay now let's quickly see the improved version of this service so just click the try it now button so that will change the screen we can also see the property syntax here and then they have reorganized the service view the response time failed request throughput and key request and it's also show the related services and then they also brought the distributed traces in the same screen we don't need to go to the request or we need to click the distributed services button we can directly analyze from here itself okay it's pretty much the same only thing is they have reorganize the content here and there so that is what they redesigned it to make it consistent across the other services as well for some reason if you want to go back to the previous view you can click the three dots and then select return to classic page so that will take you back to the classic page and if you don't want to go to the new view you can disable this otherwise what will happen is whenever you access the service it will take you directly to the new improved version okay and other commonly used options in the application observability is the distributed traces which we already seen while we are going through the service analysis and then also the multi-dimensional analysis okay so you can also do the exceptional analysis 
or you can do the top database statements okay from the services it was only showing the top web requests so you can do the exceptional and database requests as well okay so this is just to analyze these the services in a different way so that we can easily understand the performance of the particular service so this is all about the services in this video we deep dive into host page and also under application observability we have gone through the different options that are available in front end services distributed traces multi-dimensional analysis the session segmentation okay in the upcoming session what we will do is we will try to go through the remaining options that are available under observe and explorer so like creating the dashboards and creating some charts so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions i want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you in the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning